I think we'll wait for people to join in. And as and when if we have a sizable number of attendees, we can uh, start the conversation. People have already started joining in. Uh, we'll just wait for a little bit before we get moving. We'll wait for a minute. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Be Waste Wise. Oh, I am Shweta Dhanapani. I'm the community builder at Be Waste Wise. Uh, some of you may be return attendees to a Be Waste Wise webinar, so I might look very familiar to you. If you're new here, welcome to our see, webinar series uh, for the first time. Thank you for coming in. The uh, topic for today's discussion is waste from renewable energy and e-waste in India. We have a Brijesh Dubey, who's an assistant professor at the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. He is going to moderate today's webinar. This is the first in a series of webinars that Professor Dubey is going to moderate on Be Waste Wise. He is actually going to host, uh, while today's webinar is in English, he is also going to host bilingual webinars in both Hindi and English in future. Today, Professor Dubey is talking to Radhika Kalia, Managing Director at RLG Systems India Private Limited, to Mr. Prabhjot Sodhi, who's a Senior Program Director of Circular Economy at Center for Environmental Education. And we have Mr. Virendar Kaul, who's a Head of Operations from uh, E-Parisara Private Limited. We were supposed to have Parth Mr. Partha Sarathi, who's a Founder and Managing Director at E-Parisara, but unfortunately, he's not keeping well. So we have uh, Mr. Virendar Kaul instead of him. This is just a reminder to all of you that the panel will be taking questions, live questions from you, which Professor Dube will then pose to the appropriate speaker. Please use the Q&A section for your questions. For those of you who've submitted your questions already, they have been passed on to the panel and they will be factored into the conversation today. Uh, do not use chat for your questions. Please use the Q&A section. You can use chat to introduce yourselves. Over to you, Professor Dube. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Sweta and uh, all uh, uh, Mr. Call, uh, Mr. Sodhi, uh, Madam uh, uh, Radhika, and good evening to all our good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all the participants uh, who are joined from pro probably across the world. So we'll get started uh, directly. So in, as you heard, this webinar is focused on uh, waste from renewable energy sector and electronic waste. So in, as at the outset, I would like, uh, uh, like from my panelists to kind of give their initial comments on what is the status of electronic waste management, and if they want, to, if they can, they can add about from the renewable energy sector too. What is the status of e-waste management in India as of now, in terms of what challenges are there, what are the good points, what where we need to do it a little bit better. So I'll start with uh, Mr. Call, who. Uh, represents uh, E-Parisara and as a e-waste recycling company for more than, it, I think, maybe close to two decades now, uh, who is working in India, I think the oldest e-waste recycling facility in India. So, Mr. Call, your initial uh, comments on this. Good evening to all gentlemen and ladies. And I will start with the thing that e-waste recycling in India, perspective in India, I don't know about the other countries, but in India, it has started in uh, 2004, we started the recycling plant and rules came into 2016. And they have been amended from 2018. Uh, but uh, unfortunately in India, that 5% uh, of the e-waste uh, goes to formal sector and remaining 95% go to informal sector. For that, we need to create a lot of awareness. We have to create a lot of programs like this to make people aware about the hazards of the e-waste recycling in unfriendly and uh, unfriendly environmental, 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 and not good processes, not ethical processes. Uh, we started the company uh, uh, with the little of uh, 20 people where uh, we had five people, five persons in R&D and 15 persons for working started from uh, in uh, year first, we did some 200 or 300 tons of bit waste. And now it has gone up to the um, 8,000, 9,000 9, uh, 9, metric tons per annum. So uh, again, the employees have grown, R&D team has grown uh, to 30 people and uh, the person's uh, employees uh, strength has gone to around 220 people now 
we have established another unit in uh, Andhra, which targets this uh, now the most uh, most uh, wanted segment of the that is batteries, EV batteries. We recycle them. We have started to say we are the first people to recycle EV batteries and uh, lithium ion batteries segment in India. With that, uh, with that, we have started now. We are full flow, full flow. Our uh, unit in Andhra is full fledged equipped for those two things: e waste recycling and uh, lithium ion batteries and solar panels. These are the three what you call from the generation from the renewable sector, that is solar, mainly it will be EVs and the lithium ion battery segment and the solar panels. Unfortunately, again, for in the India, we, we make up the industry, uh, they manufacture things without, without making the backup plan for its recycling plan. They don't make recycling plan in advance, which is very necessary. There will be a lot of things coming in the future, which, which, which we will be not knowing how to recycle it. Most of the people around us in the India, recyclers will not be knowing how to do it. But, uh, but because of the R&D, we have been doing it beforehand. The same thing has happened in EV batteries and solar panels. We have been uh, doing this research from past five years, six years and on consent of uh, C, consent with, uh, this consent of uh, establishment that now we have consent of operations which is uh, given by the government of India. Now we are doing it. Uh, and the e-waste uh, is, uh, is the resource waste. We don't call it a waste. We call it a resource waste because the thing is that you get the metals which uh, directly from, the, uh, from these equipments, what we get as a uh, recycle. They were thinking that uh, this will be this will be processed and a lot of things will go to TSDF, TSDF and all that. We have reached to the 99.4% recovery, 99.5% uh, recovery from the uh, from this e-waste up till now. We don't give, we have not given anything to TSDF from last four years or five years because the material is not getting accumulate, accumulated sufficient. Hazardous material is not getting uh, to sufficient to give it to the TSDF. So this is the main crux is that we have to make awareness. Government has to have some programs like uh, we call it circular economy, you know, the method of circular economy, what Niti Aayog is professing it. Uh, currently, Parsati is a member of the uh, Niti Aayog and uh, we, are, we will be planning to have a first um, this, uh, recycling uh, park based on the um, circular economy theme. That means that it will be a 10 acre plot anywhere we're pitching for it and we are pitching very hard for it and so that it starts somewhere. There are, there are no e-waste recycling parks in India, unfortunately, and China has 10 of them. And, and so, so many countries have four, five, six like that, but we don't have. At least uh, with the beginning, we have pitched again with the Niti Aayog that for recycling, at least they should uh, put these recycling parks in north, uh, south, east, west zones, at least four, four to begin with them, so that those uh, things uh, can be done under one roof. And it will be a uh, sort of an uh, awareness can be created. School children can come to that park. There will be a section for that so that they can see how the, these things are done. Uh, ethically and scientifically, you know, that is uh, that is uh, the e-waste recycling. I, give, I have given the overview of it. Remaining, I will give in the give, give in the PPT, you know. Yeah. Thank we'll you. Come, we'll come to that. Yes. Uh, so we'll now we'll move to uh, Madam Radhika uh, because she kind of works in between <laughs> between as a PRO organization as well. So, uh, Madam Radhika, your initial take on what is the lay of the land, the status of e-waste management. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Dubey, for uh, giving this opportunity to me. Thank you, Shweta, and uh, of course, uh, the panelists, Mr. Cole and Mr. Sodi. Uh, uh, as far as PRO is concerned, uh, currently the current status is that everybody feels that we are middlemen here in India. Uh, being a little, it's a little sarcasm, of course, but then if I have to 
give the true definition of producer responsible organization. This culminated out of European Union and Americas and other countries globally. There are about 500 plus EPRs functioning across uh, different countries. And it is successful because people like us who are the PROs who are connecting the dots in the value chain uh, are actually, we, we move the, uh, we, we, we move the wheel of the big, large value chain where we are connecting the collection mechanism, going outreaching to the end users, collecting material, bringing to the collection centers or storage warehouses, sorting them and then segregating and sending it separately as per the requirement of the client. Because although uh, the country has uh, evolved quite a bit, uh, the rule came into being in 2012. At that point in time, most of the producers were not taking their EPR authorization, which we call it extended producer responsibility. The extended producer responsibility typically talks that the producer is responsible to channelize the e-waste, to manage how it is transported in a safe manner to the recycling uh, and the recyclability of that uh, material. So the entire onus of this uh, EPR is uh, on the shoulders of the producers. So it becomes uh, essential that the producers are responsible to collect what they have put into the marketplace. Uh, so PROs are nonetheless an extended arm of the producers where we help the producers to execute this work because the main um, businesses of producers is to put to market and not to do the back-end activities. Uh, people like producer responsibility organizations are the ones who bridge that gap and we do these services for the producers because if they start bringing back from the customers, then they'll not be able to sell them because it's a huge uh, re-commerce network which one has to build. So from that perspective, we have been working very diligently since 2017 onwards because the amended rules, uh, the rules were amended in 2016 and further re-amended in the uh, year 2018 and their PRO got recognition, PRO has a guideline. However, it's a very simple guideline from CPCB that what a PRO should be doing. Uh, uh, of course, there is a new uh, notification on the annual which was published in May 22. And uh, I think so it's in the open domain for the public to respond, uh, all the stakeholders. Uh, prima facie, the PRO, I feel it's a, it plays a very pivotal role in uh, making the value chain move uh, with the value proposition because the outreach to the end user who is the decision maker when the product actually ends its life. Uh, because if I, as an individual, if I have a refrigerator, it is up to me when I decide when I have to either dispose it off, sell it off to a dealer retailer or give it to uh, a recycling organization like a PRO or a recycler himself. So there are anomalies in the understanding in the producer's fraternity, at least in India, and the definition of PRO is not well understood in the country because most of the recyclers have become PRO. There are 80, 85 plus PROs existing in the country. However, uh, only three to four are true PROs because all recyclers have taken the PRO license. And there are about 500 plus recyclers existing, which are pretty much dismantlers, 90, 95% of them are dismantlers and not recyclers. Precious recovery is not happening as much. Uh, this is up to my understanding in the last five years, what we've seen. Uh, most of the uh, recyclers are sending it either to Korea or to uh, Europe for uh, recovering precious metals or even to China. So that's a little gray area. Even if we open uh, to what Mr. Paul said that we open eco parks, Eco parks uh, would be a welcome step, provided there are proper subsidies, because this is as good as uh, a manufacturing unit. Recycling is nothing but urban mining, and it has to be done in a proper back-end uh, assembly line, where we segregate materials appropriately, cherry pick the right material, and metal recovery can only happen if the PCB is good and strong. So the, the understanding of the bomb has to be a critical uh, aspect and how the metal recovery comes in. So uh, last, what I would like to highlight is Moradabad is a very good case study where uh, mm -hmm. you have, uh, it, it is known as Pital uh, Nagri, where your copper and aluminum is extracted so uh, very well by the informal domain. There are about 500,000 household people 
who are working into recovering of uh, copper and aluminum in formalized in 2012. They were a lot of ban to the, uh, this industry. However, things have not shaped up the way it was intended to do. And with the new change in the rule, which is uh, on the anvil, which was which got brought in in May 22, the entire question of collection mechanism has been removed, which is a little sorry state of affairs. Uh, of course, I will answer in furthermore questions if asked, but the role of sure. a PRO is nothing but connecting all the dots together, all stakeholders, and collect, take it to the, uh, transport the material in a proper manner to the dismantling units or to the recycling units, and then, of course, uh, see how the downstream happens, how the mass flow happens. So we are only talking sure. about recyclability here and not yeah. reuse and refurbishment. Yeah, thank you so much. So thank you. Thank you, Radhika, and uh, for your initial comments. And now I'll move to uh, Mr. Sodhi for his initial remark on this. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, please unmute yourself, Mr. Sodhi. We're not able to hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Can you hear yeah. me now? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dubey. And thank you, Mr. Cole and Radhika for the opportunity. I think so. It's a very important thought process which you are connecting across the levels. I must give you some of the real, sometimes I say shockers for e-waste, you know. Consumer nearly discarded 53.6 metric ton in 2019 globally up 20% in last five years. So that means the chain is moving, Dr. Dubey. Only about 70 to 20% is getting recycled. So I think so it's timely that you are professing that to the people because it creates greater opportunities. And I think so we will come later in the day on the rules, which are very, very constructive and positive. But I also want to say that India is fast emerging as a uh, generation for this e-waste, you know. We are about three metric tons in about 2019, and we may rise up by the end of this year, 50%. We'll jump up to 7%. That's the rate of flow. And, you know, when I was in the last handling uh, during the COVID times, you know, as we were discussing and somebody pointed it out to me, Mr. Sodi, you were talking that plastics are emerging more, packaging is coming more. Uh, the, the, the real time is that electronic usage has gone more because we people are indoors. Mm -hmm. Having been in indoors, more discard, more computers, more change to televisions, laptops, phones, and games, whatnots to keep ourselves occupied. And the discard phenomena which we have was increasing. So even globally, then I was trying to search, you know, when you asked me, and I was searching on the UN systems, and I found and felt that even globally is worth about $62.5 billion. Since you have asked for comments on what is the scenario, it is such a big opportunity for young uh, people to really get into it and create $62.5 billion which is three times the output of all the world's silver mines. You know, that is the capacity and that is the possibility. Now, taking you to the real-time situation, what we need to really adopt and learn under this is the sustainable methods. What Dr. Call was trying to say that we really need to have the uh, recycling parks, you know. Uh, I know that in the state pollution of control board in uh, Rajasthan, they are putting up a park together. There is one in Hyderabad, but we don't have one for the electronic waste as such, where the students can be exposed. There are many things, many intricacies of it, which really needs to be taken into before we really get the e-waste into the landfills, you know. That'll be, and I was very happy to see when he said that we have limited to go to the TDSRF, uh, play, uh, even though they are crying for material because they have paid money and to the pollution control board and they have, they are saying that we need to have the materials, but it's so good to hear that Dr. Call that you are putting up 98. The, the other thing which I wanted to say before we go on to a little bit on the renewable energy 
in the e-waste, the entire ecosystem is based on the approach adopted something like best practices of plastics also. Electronic scrap processors, the whole ecosystem needs to be taken combined. The scrap processor, the re recycling firms, the manufacturers, the scrap buyers and brokers, the device repair business shops, you know, they need to be given importance as well because the current guidelines brings refurbishers as a very, very important sector or a stakeholder within the lot. While we have the producers and the manufacturers, the refurbisher has been designed into it. And I was even talking more that uh, the refurbisher brings the repairability, how we can bring the other angles of circularity into the show when we are trying to say, and what about the, the people, uh, those who are really engaged in remanufacturing uh, across or redesigning into new products, that is something a link will be brought in. I'm sure these policies are quite uh, strongly developed and over a period of time, the learnings will go into it and they will keep on further blossoming. But not to say it is one of the most, uh, what, what should I say, one of the most practical and proactive guidelines which has come up. Uh, they have also mentioned on lack of awareness at the household levels, which needs to be brought in. There is a lack of system-based collection, which we need to recoup it. Uh, and there is also incentive, which need to be built across the ecosystem for the collectors both and for the refurbishers, those who are doing. That sort of an incentive system has been said. The Niti Aayog has put up manuals on, tox uh, on explaining the toxicity, safety, and awareness. But I think so. Putting up the manuals will not really solve. We have to get people like Mr. Call and Radhika and many more to come into the field in order to combat this situation. And if I'm talking on the, let me take a little deep, deep dive into uh, the RE sector. And you know, India uh, is also one of the growing uh, places where the RE is being put into a greater uh, focus with the result, if I have to say, that India's target is going to be by 2050, 75 uh, million gigawatts. Uh, so, and then in 2030, we are going up to be 3.25 lakh. So all that which we are going to put the, the renewable energy focus, there is going to be a little waste which is going to be come up. There are five big countries who are resulting into, I don't call it as a waste because that's a very big resource. Everything can be recycled. I was talking to one of the, um, uh, during one of the discussions with the uh, glass manufacturing uh, association and they said uh, the glass which is there is all recyclable and then the other aspects of aluminium is all recyclable. So we really need to get into the recycling policies for such. The, the five major countries which are producing high uh, solid uh, solar waste are Germany, India, Japan, USA, and China, of course. So keeping in view that, I think so, the immediate step required by the Ministry of Forest and Climate Change is to announce a regulation to provide uh, that this, uh, to prevent it not going into the landfills really, and associated balance of systems and mandatory recycle, like we have the WEE policy, uh, legislation in Europe and in European Union. Something like that, we have to bring out the solar uh, also for the re. And I'll take a minute more. Analyze the real time emissions of a typical solar PV module, right from raw material procurement to the landfill. Uh, probably that's where, when you were saying, how can the academics come into it? And I think so, that's where the academics really need to come up um, in order to really bring that what is the real time emissions happening. And we were talking today, I'm sitting in Ganjam today, which is in Orissa district to the people, those who are there. And we were sitting with the commissioner, we were launching the collections and the integration of the ecosystem with the plastics. But he was talking, I have an electronic market, so deep. How can we really make for the electronic market? There are a lot of dismantling, people leave their hoods Whatever they want to take away, they take away and the balance is thrown over. So I think so these are the real, real time problems. Uh, and I think so the government is really going on it with the new 
Niti Aayog, 11 committees which were formed in different sectors. And I think so. Congratulations to the government of India for thinking across, not today, but since last four years, in which they are really seeing that how we can bring the circular economy back in 11 sectors. And all 11 ministries have been lined up. They've got the draft reports there. And now the ministries are being asked to really impact and enact on themselves. And uh, the draft legislation framework asserting recovery of the raw material. And that is one of the most important things, which was Dr. Call was also trying to say. So I think so that will set up the whole circular economy chapter into this situation. I'll come up later into the details. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, to all of you for the initial uh, set of thoughts. And now I think we can jump directly into the questions. We have some questions and then uh, I have some questions in my mind as well, so which I'll come back later. But first we will take audience uh, question. Uh, so the question from Dipesh, he wants to start uh, and this directed to Madam Radhika. Uh, so he, he says that I'm interested in e-waste management. How should I start a career business in this field? So I thought Radhika, you would be the best person to, since you are working, uh, you recently yes. started a business. So can you please go ahead and talk about that? So uh, I, I feel uh, he needs to first figure out where his interest is. Is his interest in technology, in recovering the precious metal, or he wants to work in operations where we are working. A PRO typically is uh, collecting material, spreading awareness, having toll-free numbers, having apps where we are actually building an, uh, a corporate where it uh, works in a reverse uh, manner. We are... Uh, we have a website, a toll-free uh, uh, awareness programs, take-back programs, collecting material from various uh, you know, cities in India, working on a hub-and-spoke model uh, within the state, doing a lot of activations in cities. So there is a marketing team which works on, there is a compliance and risk management team which is continuously doing a lot of audits on various recyclers and dismantlers. Uh, where we require a lot of EHS uh, kind of environment engineering uh, kind of profiles. Uh, marketing is like any other marketing com uh, a company which uh, an organization is going to market its product categories. We have a CRM function, uh, uh, you know, how we, uh, for us, every load is an SKU. So it's a proper organization how a producer would be doing when they put to market their products, whether it is television or refrigerator. So uh, while uh, even Mr. Uh, Sodi was talking about that Niti Aayog is doing a lot of activation, 11 sectors are working on recyclability. However, uh, the major concern that I feel is a collection mechanism and change in behavior of consumer is the utmost important key uh, uh, to the success of recyclability. So if operation does not happen, so if the patient is interested in doing operations activity, I think so he should join PROs and not recyclers. Recyclers are best in recycling and doing the mining work and digging out good metal, precious metals, plastics, and segregating that. However, a PRO is the one it's working totally, totally on operations. So we, we can say uh, very proudly that we are the Amazons of this industry. Good, thanks. Uh, so there was one a follow up there as well. Is the CPCB going to discontinue PRO as part of this new rule? Is that uh, no? So we were okay. meeting uh, Niti Aayog and even the MOEF secretary. Uh, their concern to change the rule was to focus on two major stakeholders, which is producer and the recycler. Nowhere they have said that uh, PROs or the facilitators can't work. They have taken a clue from the plastic waste uh, rules where they. Uh, have uh, removed the WMAs also and the PROs also, even the ULB tie-up, which was essential. And uh, they are focusing purely on two stakeholders, which is the uh, one end of the uh, entire value chain, which is a producer who's responsible to collect. And the second uh, closed loop uh, is the recycler. In between the value chain is there. They don't want to make any disruption. However, the okay. interpretation of the rule is that the PROs and the dismantlers are not recognized as a stakeholder. So there is an interpretation which requires a lot of clarity from the government uh, because collection without collection mechanism, I don't think so there could be any recycling. Yeah. Um, we have done our bits of advocacy with the government and given them why a PRO should be regulated. However, they are taking some advisors 
and uh, there is also a association which has been formed which is indian federation of reverse logistics which talks about the benefits of reverse logistics uh, we've also met niti aayog mr amitabh khan where uh, the government is recognizing the reverse logistics aspects of collection and transfer so i don't think so pro will okay. be weaned off but their role will become more sure. important as a catalyst in the entire value chain okay thank you uh, so now i move to the next question from pratima pandey and i will direct it to mr call uh, and i think you talked about that in the very beginning as well say it, the question is related to e waste so it on one hand uh, it's a resource waste uh, for formal recycling system on the other hand very less comes to this formal recycling company right? they are not coming to this so what are the possible ways that the most of the e waste goes to the formal sector so that we can have more and more resource recovery so mr call so how we how we can make it reach, reach to you <laughs> more so and you are muted so please unmute yourself yeah the uh, the more uh, it's not possible that we will get more in near future also the scenario is from the last 6 uh, year, uh, 10 years i am in the company uh, there is no uh, change in the percentage it's static at 5 to 6 5 to 6 so percentage what formal sector is getting up but uh, it is the at the, the major thing the awareness create awareness among the public especially the school children the college the uh, government that this is a resource waste it has to be it has to be uh, disposed of in an environmentally friendly manner so that uh, there are no uh, emissions of uh, degraded degradation of uh, air water and soil that's the main what it uh, any waste successful waste recycling company it's not earning the profits we don't earn much profit of it it is a mission if anybody wants to jump tell me so many people come to me that how we, how i will start the evs recycling company i will advise i advise them that it is a very difficult job because you will not get profits you have to have a, you have to have an that mission like mr parsarthi has that he has he is not earning much profit but he is maintaining his thing he has not taken any loans he has not still he is expanding so that is the way the things uh, what uh, it has to be government has to also uh, dispose of its uh, there are so many government offices disposing this e waste to the uh, informal sector i call them what should i call them in formally informal sector they have the license but they have nothing else than license they can compete in um, this uh, e bidding which is very prevalent among uh, in e waste e bidding and all that uh, they can uh, go and pick the um, pick the material by other means also in the government uh, staffs the government has to be very strict that they have to have the audit of the companies audit of these e waste recyclers what they have whether they have the facilities whether they have the machines whether they have the, they have the trained manpower whether they have the technology whether they have the csr in place to show that uh, they are creating the awareness among the people uh, like uh, e parasara it's uh, dedicating saturday every saturday is for school children and college children they will visit us we believe we old people will not change it it's beyond we are beyond repair so but we believe that uh, uh, the uh, children if they in their mind set up mind it gets that it should be done like that and he will teach your mother don't keep the e waste in your uh, corner of that and uh, sell it to the uh, kabadi wala you give it to he will he will create the awareness he will be the future it may be happen after 10 or 20 years and so the government has to pitch in, in that i think uh, e auctioning should be stopped right forth with them in this segment it is uh, the um, people in cartels who do the cart uh, this uh, bidding they sit in the cartels and uh, suppose nine eight people so from these informal sectors only formally informal sectors for this eight ninety people will sit in the room they will give the bidding they will fix the bid up to what they have to go and give when they win the bid they give to one person like that 10% they will give 10 bits to everybody and that is the scenario of the 
uh, why it's not changing, why it's not changing. Uh, it should have, uh, the gap should have uh, increased, say, if it were 10, 15%, 5%, 15% going through, well, it's good, it's a good sign, but it's, the sign is not good. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Call, for your uh, uh, answer to that. So now I move to the next question, uh, which is on the collection system. So I'd uh, uh, request uh, Mr. Sodhi to kind of take that question up. The question is on uh, how to, uh, basically, how we are not able to collect and segregate e-waste efficiently at present. And even uh, with the EPR and other initiative, collection rate is very little. So I think probably he's talking about formal collection. Uh, so how can we improve this collection system? So, and with the e-waste growth happening, uh, how to make it happen? Uh, Mr. Sodhi, please. Okay, now audible. Yeah. So I think, so thank you, Dr. Dubey. You see, collection system is not only a problem for e-waste, it's a problem across all sectors. If I tell you, even for plastics, even for uh, e-waste, even for solar, there is no collection system formalized as yet in solar. I'll come to it a little later. But you see, we, as both the speakers have said, we have to use a combination of methods. Today in Ganjam, what we did was that in the electronic market, we have agreed with the commissioner that they will give us a space and where we are going to put three bins, three different bins, and clearly outlining in them, this has this waste has to go here, this has to go here, this has to go here. And people are asking, ke, hum kya tube light bhi aapko de sakte hai? can I give you my mercury tube lights also? We said, yes, you can very much give us. And, you know, everything needs to be going in a market mechanism system. So what we did was, Okay, you give us this, we will give you back this. So for every five things you give us, we'll give you a cloth bag free. If you give us these two, we will give you a mask free. We are even trying to put reverse vending machines wherein we can have the electronic materials to go. We have all seen reverse vending machines for plastics. We have put reverse vending machines for plastic where we have put the digital applications there. And if the bottle is going, you press it all. Then there is a clip coming that, okay, five bottles, I'll get 5% discounts on Zomato or Nandan International Hotel or something. We have to incentivize. Awareness is very important. But we have to create a co-working systems of creating incentive for the citizens to they understand. I don't know, Brijesh. I have been thinking in my line when I'm working, I don't know which man or a woman in this country. I think so it must be a lady. So Radhika, all points to you and Shweta. That newspapers are never thrown out. They are collected and they are bargained with the vendor. Why can't we create a system in which we can have all sorts of waste going? That awareness we are trying to create. And this has to go into the ecosystem. Now I was talking to you about Solar, you know, solar. We, we, we don't even know across what does the solar PV panel contain. 70% is glass, 18% is aluminium. Then there is some encapsulant, 2 to 3%. Then there is silicon, 3 to 5%. When it, and then there is precious metals like, you know, and those drop by and then they are highly, highly contaminated. And that has to go in. By 2016, we had 2,500 metric tons of solar waste. By 2022, we are going to have 200,000 tons. Two lakh tons of solar PV waste within us. The waste is happening in discard because we are already 20 years into it. The waste is happening in transport. The waste is happening in unloading and loading. I visited, without naming it, I visited one of the the, uh, the person who was acting on behalf of one of the state renewable energy department. My father wanted to get the renewables done and link it up for the, uh, the to revert back and then get the money back. So I said, fine, let me go and visit his go down. 
I visited his godown. There were PV panels, no less than 100 broken. And I said to him, Yaar, I said, what is the, how are you going to take these PV panels? Is nobody, no sir, Saab ne kaha hai. we have to keep them here separately. But, you know, just imagine the lack of awareness to these renewable energy people who are planting. So the ball game comes up. Awareness is one. Collection system needs to be incentivized. People want money. Why newspaper is getting collected? I was with the paper industry. 94% of the newsprint in the country is getting collected. And mind you, 4% of the white paper is getting collected, which is 4 million mm -hmm. metric tons, and we are importing that. It's going to be the same phenomena for uh, e-waste. And I worry, and I don't want to say I should be proven wrong on it, that uh, e-waste should not suffer the same. And Mr. Call said, my since last four years, the number is not increasing. So we will have to inclusively bring the informal sector into the fold and tell them, look, there is this is toxic. We urge you to really do the dismantling to these recyclers. Don't you get into it. There are refurbishers, there are all this. So please come and take your money back. Sure. Unless we don't do this business model of the approach, we're not going to succeed. I'm sorry, I wish to be proven wrong. I'm very happy to be proven wrong. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. So just a follow-up question, and I'll take it with Radhika on that. Uh, it's from Pooja Pandey. Uh, and her question is that we all know that, yes, uh, awareness is not there. We have to increase awareness among the public. But as an aware citizen as well, if I have e-waste, I don't know where to take it. Uh, like whom to call because those information is not available to me as well. So what, uh, how, Radhika, can you please uh, elaborate on that? So uh, uh, to be honest, when I started in the beginning, uh, a producer responsible organization helps the producer to create that kind of environment where they update the citizens of the country, where they can come and drop. Just giving you a clue from Japan, the Japan, um, uh, over there you have... Uh, advanced recycling fees mechanism uh, while the company, uh, when a com uh, consumer purchases the material uh, or they have to pay a fees. Here in India, it's a little different where we have the body who are collecting and paying us. But in Japan, they have to pay a fees. The customer has to pay to dispose their e-waste or whatsoever. Yeah. And there are four, uh, 400 to 500 collection centers. And there are only two groups. And each group, has about 25 to 30 producers in there uh, as members. So producer responsible organization in this country does not exist the way it exists in other countries. Wherein a corpus is built by these producers being a member of this PRO and that uh, has to be advertised. Now CPCP has been only uh, focusing on the producers, why they are not advertising when they advertise for their product launches, they should also do for e-waste no company would advertise for e-waste unless and until there is some advertisement can go up from uh, as low as two to three lakhs till 50 lakhs if one has to take a full page. That can only happen if they join a corpus like uh, a PRO and help them to do awareness programs, make that change in behavior. Now, uh, Pooja does not know what is the toll free number which we would have or the other PROs would have as yes. a customer. We cannot do so much of advertisement because we are not brand owners. We but have limited access to monies. We do do to pickups. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah, we do that. But we are not able to propagate it as much because we need funds for it. And these funds have to come from producers. They are the ones who are channelizing the funds to the value chain. And there in CPCB, when they are awarded EPR authorization, there is a subsection six in form one, which they mandates them to give the budgets as to how much spends they will do on awareness. So they have toll free. But with the new rules, which is coming in, I think so none of this is being mentioned. It's being mm -hmm. devoid totally. And uh, when Mr. Sodi was talking about how collection mechanism has to happen, there should be an integrated mechanism for all types of waste. If we can do for Raddi or the paper waste that we are collecting from households, likewise, other waste should also, like there is no channelization for battery waste in our household. We are either dropping it into our dustbin 
and it is the most hazardous uh, product it it has led and if a child picks it up and bites it it's it's very harmful now this kind of awareness we all educated people have but why does the consumer or the person user not raise that voice to the government and create a policy policy is there but operationally it is not there pooja is very much right that she does not know where to go and drop her material it can only happen if the producer is discerning and sincere enough in creating a corpus and re releasing that's why a pro is a very important aspect as a stakeholder and which is being removed in the new rules so i would urge mr sodi with his you know good officers he can really help us as well as the dismantlers that these two stakeholders to be you know recognized within the value chain and uh, there has to be due recognition into the system where government is totally not recognizing them in the new rule and even the producers are not recognizing they are only working on epr certification it will work like carbon credits and the recycler we are making an oligopoly kind of a situation where he can you know demand whatever price from the producer if and it will be a function of demand and supply so we are just resting all our activities on few recyclers hand where they will be demanding rates from the producer that will be more cartel formalization kind of a system so uh, the value system which has been created in the last 5 6 years should be further strengthened and further audited by the authorities or third party that how the system can be further created at an integrated mechanism then only eco parks will survive for recycling otherwise uh, what will the recyclers do we will build so many recycling units and no material coming in and with in the new notification there are 75 more items which have been added which recycler has the facility to do all 96 items with solar panels medical equipment toys being added in or the bts towers they are very restricted in their approach there are only 10 or 15 items which are getting recycled mm -hmm. each category requires a different uh, methodology of breaking and recovering material precious material or whatsoever so that technology has to also evolve line by line thank you Th thank you uh, so uh, now i move to mr call for uh, see as radhika was talking about precious metal recovery so how to make this precious metal recovery happen in india so maybe next time when we have commonwealth game or asian game we can have uh, medals made out of that like japan did uh, for the olympic games uh, last year so how to make that reality in india uh, mr call uh, i don't know about the india but you parasra is making medals for Uh, sports and all that in okay. in e parasara no? all the metals recovered from the is being used for making medals uh, and all souvenirs and plated so you have you recover all the way to the precious metal at uh, bangalore facility we we recover part of it because okay. there is a issue in that because uh, uh, the e, the pcb required for uh, recovery of uh, e this precious metals is only in 4.5% in the total of the east chain so <laughs> it goes to the uh, it 4.5% doesn't come to us we can we receive very little say we receive about uh, four or five tons uh, say 10 tons but five tons five to six tons per month that uh, that uh, that is being out of that part of it is being processed because we had done a project with the cement through cement uh, sponsored by mighty that uh, mighty that uh, is recovery of precious metals uh, recovery of precious metals from pcb circuit boards mm -hmm. and uh, component and components also so we have completed that project here it was at our site e parasara site was it was site was e parasara and they uh, all the uh, things were done at e parasara only we contributed in uh, we contributed 30 40% by the way of knowledge and some money we also put in it was a ppp project so it completed successfully you know but for uh, run, recovering the precious metals we require the furnace should run 24 bar by 7 24 by 7 continuously if there is no metals if i switch on the uh, furnace 
right now i should uh, at least for 3 4 months it should run continuously that much, much it will i have to stop the furnace because i don't have any material switching of the off and on material with this furnace uh, the energy consumption was very high and the okay. refractory bricks of uh, refractory bricks breaks and we have to lay again the refractory bricks and so we started from uh, say 100 kgs then 500 kgs and we uh, we enhanced up to we are now at the level of production uh, uh, recovery of 1 ton or furnace okay. what we had developed that's so the step yes so from 1 ton how much say gold silver and other thing comes out it, i think I it would be of interest to the people to know yeah yeah just i will uh, i'll show you in the ppt it's there i don't remember now really and Okay. but it is okay, in the ppt fine. slide is there for that mm -hmm. so what is uh, what is the uh, crux of matter that uh, we are we are recovering now some uh, three or uh, seven days uh, per per month we are running our furnace and we are incurring the cost of this energy more and uh, refractory bricks laying more because we can do it because we have the r&d team who takes care of it but the cost of the things from refractory bricks and all that has to come at the cost of that is okay. that is the only impediment <laughs> otherwise okay. uh, we can start it recovery uh, right now we are recovering recovering gold silver every uh, part what is in the pcb we are recovering it okay thank you thank you so uh, there is a question which is kind of a general not on the specific to e waste toxic in general like what are the government initiatives in supporting new businesses in waste management sector including e waste or Uh, there is not much of a support from the government i will tell you because uh, there is no subsidies uh, what e waste is doing is it is reducing the considerable amount of uh, footprints carbon footprints in the atmosphere releasing it in the atmosphere by doing that non friendly uh, this uh, recovery and uh, the uh, gases like nox is sox is are avoided are not uh, going into the atmosphere and, so in solar energy solar uh, this manufacturers they get the carbon footprints footprints but uh, we save more than them if i give you a data how much i have saved for 20 years it is considered we have not got anything from that it's not listed in that all. it's that uh, uh, it's not listed in, in anywhere footprints uh, will not be given that later so we don't bother about that but we should get the material that is all we should get the material for recycling and Uh, the value chain should be such that uh, these flows in the proper manner not in staggering manner so we now what why we are surviving we are surviving because most of the material i get from b2b okay mm -hmm. so they they we have the our concerns also but they come us for a detail lot for two or three days after satisfying their they have the they have their own protocol after satisfying that this they they because they are all agencies from the abroad they have they value that they value they are yeah. in the country and part of that they try to implement here they mm -hmm. certify that this is a certified facility can be done here so mm -hmm. we renew the agreements after one year we have to show improvements uh, after each that we had on improvements and all that so that uh, continuity of those uh, agreements happen are there is continuing we have about 50 or 60 mncs who are giving us to uh, material okay. from uh, right from 2005 okay thank you so and uh, and then question is also there like what uh, there is a question for pankaj meena and uh, some other people also kind of ask similar questions so question is uh, then that's direct to mr sodhi uh, they talk about say we are talking about waste but what about the product itself can uh, product should be designed better product is actually becoming more disposable now if you look at electronics there we are uh, the turn around time is much quicker so how and there are some work going on in europe in that area we know but what about that sector in what is what about that thought in india are we talking about how to make the product be longer more durable you are on mute uh, so this up so this is a good one really i think so there is uh, your previous question which was there we, uh, i'll answer to this as well that what are the incentives the government is giving i think so we also need to 
be a partner uh, to the to the uh, you know with the city municipal corporations if i say or the ulbs which are the formal collection channels which have been created for the waste which includes all kinds of waste we have a very poor segregation system but now more and more segregation is happening but with the awareness we'll have to have a very integrated multi dimensional and a multi faceted approach in which we will have to call out a strategy for a city it can be tailor made to other cities and uh, we have to really bring the markets association within the framework and that all can be done within the close working relationships with the municipal corporations you know because it's a win win situation for everybody it's a difficult task uh, i as a businessman don't have the time to really get into it but then one has to look for cost benefits how much material will it really get into me if i do this way so you know we will have to have uh, institutions like your academic institutions trying to give the real time pictures and trying to give us a, a way that this is what going to happen if this is done if this is what going to happen if this is done that's all of scenarios should be there certainly there has to be uh, a redesigning of the product the products are happening in a use and throw um, system we have over the last 10 years you know i'm wearing this watch this fitbit or whatever i should have not named it but these watches what do i do we have all come to these watches and suddenly did i realize what am i going to do i was checking with this that if this gets unoperational what do i do with it i just throw and that throw it goes into the bin and the bin goes into the landfill and then the landfill gets choking so we have to develop the systems and invest into the redesigning reuse concept and the material extraction which both the speakers are trying to say because more the material extraction the less will be the virgin use and less will be the carbon emissions there so i think so the 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 point in the uh, rules also i think that the rules are very positive they have brought in the refurbishing and i in my opening remarks said it that redesign should also be as a part of these rules and try and give us how this is going to be but i i when mean, giving all the benefits rules have come they will over a period of time get re revised revisited like we have done in the plastic so will happen in the electronic and these are very positive things we should look into it the companies are going and reinvesting into the system in research and development on the product life cycle yeah. and the product design so they are seeing the product on the life cycle and how it needs to be designed to see that it's less emissions so there is going to be in the next 4 or 5 years circular economy has gained the precedence over the linear economy and all the countries are focusing it even in the stockholm convention uh, recently there was a very good statement which came into my mind that ignorance or indifference we can do massive and irreversible harm to the environment so one has to really think on that what i am leading in to do and what it is going to impact and how does it really impact the life and the well being that's what more needs to be seen so there is no to yep. do to use about it sure. over to you sure thank you thank you mr sodhi we are actually running out of time we have less than 2 minutes left now so uh, so we'll uh, give the final words to uh, madam radhika so how to make all these things better uh, how to where we should head in future uh, see i totally appreciate what policies are being made if the regulator is making policy people like us the pros dismantlers the recyclers all the stakeholder into the value chain have to operationalize it uh, we work as a platform where we connect the dots and every stakeholder needs to do its responsibility in a proper manner uh in the last 5 years we have seen a lot of work happening in this domain uh, from only 25 recyclers in the year 2012 today we have 500 plus recyclers this matters to no pros to be around almost 100 plus uh, pros existing in the country uh, the work has happened there is a huge competition however there is no mechanism of price regulation right now 
So uh, the government says it's market forces which should determine. However, there is no uh, aspect on to how these prices, so bill of material, like you had a very good point on eco-design. Um, so the circular economy paper of the Niti IO does specify that eco-design is a must have. They are uh, working on it. Uh, they have taken certain representations also from various stakeholders. Uh, mm -hmm. While they're doing that, it's important to understand the bill of material and how it translates into uh, the mass flow. So if that uh, marriage of uh, mass flow and the bill of material is done, the right pricing would evolve. Currently, the recyclers are working and the dismantlers or PRO, the market is operating at a six rupees per kg to max 15 rupees a kg for durable products. And for IT, it is an, somewhere about 10 to 20 rupees. Now, we just now discussed the raddi, which we call it very famously, the household raddi is sold for 10 to 12 rupees a kg. So the rates are very well, uh, highly competitive and not matched with the core competency of the competent level because it, uh, commodity prices are also playing there. So it's a business dynamics which works after the rule is created. That business dynamics has to be understood by the top-notch uh, producers, by the top management, and then they, it has to be absorbed in the cost structures. If that is not done, this rule will just be a rule, and we will all be doing some kind of activity around it to make businesses work and make profits. So that should not be the idea. The very essence of the rule will get lost. There has to be there has to be a shake-up time for every stakeholder how the pricing has to be done, a value proposition to be created in the value chain. That's missing, right? So, so there's a lot yeah. of work to be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. We actually ran thank out you. of time. We are one minute over now. So yes, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Call, we could not get your slides because of the oh. lack of time and so many questions. But uh, yeah, one, if you want to share those slides. One. No, no, I will, yeah, I will share. I will tell a yeah. uh, few suggestions I will give. I think it's an, uh, it, it may be a valid suggestions also, no? Uh -huh. So the recycling cost yeah. should be included in the MRP of the product. Mm -hmm. They should be set aside at the time of selling that, that value should go to the recycler for recycling those product. That's the basic yeah. thing in this. It's not in everywhere in every world, other parts of the world, it's done like that. MR uh, recycling value is kept, suppose it is 10 rupees, that 10 rupees is included in the MRP, they set that money for giving it to recycling. Yep. And, and they get set uh, certain, and the, about your precious metals you are telling, now the product of China, China, Chinese product have mushroomed in the market. The value, what we are getting in precious metals has fallen down by 50 to 60% down. Because okay. they have compromised on the gold plating, say, instead of doing 0.2 or 0.3 micron, they are doing 0 0.005 micron, just, just give a bath only. You know. So there is uh, uh, the cost of the cost factor is not matching now. If the mushrooming of most of the recyclers, uh, recycling facilities, which have a recyclers license which have given, they have closed also. Attrition is also very good because of this reason also. Only they have re realized it that the value is not coming out of it. That's it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you thank you, Mr. Call. Thank you, Mr. Sodhi. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Radhika. So thank you, uh, again, uh, we had a good lot of questions, a lot of interactions, a uh, lot of uh, good points came out. Of course, we have to work together to make it a better sector uh, for waste management. We'll again meet at some other platform. Uh, yeah. So thank you. I'll hand it over to Sweta now. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ube, and thanks a lot to all the panelists, uh, Radhika, uh, Virinder, as well as Prabhjot. Thanks a lot for joining in today and for giving us your time. And uh, to the audience, you will have access to this webinar uh, because you've registered for it. It will go up on our website in two weeks' time. It will go up on our website as well as YouTube channel. And do sign up for our newsletter. You will get information of Dr. Uh, Dubey's the other uh, webinars that he's going to moderate for us. Thank you so much. Have a good day, good evening, wherever you've logged in from. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Good evening. Thank you so much.